Hello everyone, this is The Nelston. Welcome back to another video. Today we will be talking about the custom magic system in Rebirth of the Night, as well as some of the different ways that you can use it to progress throughout the pack and make yourself more powerful. This video will be covering a pretty wide breadth of content, so if you want to learn about specific concepts related to magic and rotten, feel free to skip around using the chapter system I've set up. Alright, let's get right into it. In order to get started with magic, we're going to need to talk a little bit about some of the most basic resources. The most fundamental of these new materials are Quintessence and this, which you can see here. Quintessence is, well, essentially the quintessential essence of the world's magic. Different types of Quintessence represent different magical aspects and can be obtained from mining various magicite blocks scattered throughout dimensions, killing powerful magical mobs to unlock new Quintessence drops from existing magicite, or manually crafting Quintessence with a mortar using different items that are connected to that essence's specific magic. This is a physical manifestation of non-elemental magic and also has two main ways of being collected. The first is to find it as a byproduct of mining either Wonder Geodes or Magicite, and the second is to grind up materials in a mortar, granting this specs as a byproduct. The better your mortar, and yes, there are tiers of mortars, the more likely you are to obtain this specs while crushing things up. Here you can see the different chances you have. So for example, we have 15% here, 25% with the Arcane, and 35% with Mystical. In order to unlock higher levels of this from specs, such as slivers and shards, you'll need to soak this specs in lunar water in a soaking pot. Soaking specs will get you slivers, while soaking slivers will get you shards. To get lunar water, you need to throw lunar quintessence into a cauldron of water left out overnight, and you can tell it's eligible for conversion when you see these particles above the cauldron. Using these materials, particularly quintessence, we can now make the secondary tier of materials, runes. Runes are very important as they are going to be the main tool with which you harness different aspects to perform magic in crafting and world manipulation. Before we talk about crafting though, I'd like to highlight some of the really cool things that runes can do when you right click on certain things with them. Nature runes can turn framed glass into botanic glass, Soul runes can turn regular sand into soul sand. Creation runes can turn different types of cobblestone into their respective stone types. And finally, disintegration runes can do the opposite, turning stones into their respective cobblestone types. Alright, back to crafting. Virtually all crafting involving magic is going to require either a runic workbench, which you saw earlier, and a ritual table, which is made at a runic workbench. Hey buddy, can you... The GUI of the Runic Workbench is a little bit complex, so let's go over each section. Here is the main crafting grid where you'll put most of your ingredients. Over here are two slots where you will put the runes you need to craft whatever you're making if they're required. Here is the slot for additional ingredients, such as quintessence, if a recipe calls for it. And of course, here is the output. Now, I would dedicate a section to the ritual table, but I mean... I don't know, how much more simple can this get? So, why does magical crafting actually matter? Well, there are a ton of useful items you can craft and use to do some pretty wild stuff. For starters, you can craft several different types of wands that can do things ranging from basic damage to summoning mounts. This guy's a little bit on fire, but you know, he does work well at night, trust me. These wands consume wand powder, which can be crafted either as such or can drop from certain mobs, like the Wither. While you can carry around the loose powder like an uncivilized gremlin, you can also store the powder in a pouch as such. So you see, if you right click with the pouch, it'll kind of store a stack of wand powder at a time. If you shift right click, I believe, yeah, it'll give you one wand powder back. Additionally, you can activate numerous rituals, which can do some pretty crazy stuff like summoning mobs. Make crafting ingredients. And more.
More and more rituals are being added every single update, so make sure to stay tuned. All right, well, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below or join my Discord and drop a question there. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.